Hello, everybody, and welcome to Real Red Talk New Show. As you can see, I'm joined by Dan Raj next to me. How are you doing, Dan? Yeah, I'm doing great, Nick. How are you? Good stuff. I'm good. Um, now, straight into it, Dan, because there's some massive, massive breaking news. Let's say just as we were just about to record this, we had all our notes ready and all that kind of stuff, and then, boom, some massive news uh, comes out regarding Matt Judge. So, and this is from David Ornstein, and he says that Matt Judge has resigned as Manchester United's head of corporate development. He will serve his notice period, but is now not expected to play an active role in the summer transfer window. Um, as I said, this broke about ten minutes ago. We've we've now had you know Ed Woodward, head of pretty much everything, leave in February, I believe it was. We've recently had Jim Lawler and Marcel Bout leave from the scouting department. And now we've got Matt Judge, who's been head of corporate development and negotiating since about 2012, I think, something like that. Um, so it legit seems like everything upstairs is being changed. And hopefully, um, you know, we can see a few more changes, maybe with Paul Mitchell coming into the fold um, and, and a few others being sort of rejigged upstairs. But apparently this is being drove mainly by um, John Murta. That's what also what uh, David Ornstein's come out and said. He's the one who's doing all this, the, the sorting all of upstairs out. So it seems like finally um, there's, there's been some change, cha the real change that need, that I can't speak, the real changes that are needed are being done. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, I love that. Um, but yeah, just, just Matt Judge going is a massive one because he, he, we look at all our faults, you know, in the past 10, 15 years, Dan. And it's been transfers, on it? Like the recruitment has just been absolutely awful. We've been stung in the transfer market countless amount of times. Um, and he he's head of negotiations. So he's the one who, who's doing all this alongside Ed Woodward and both of them gone now. So that can only be a positive guy. Yeah, exactly. We have seen that uh, uh, mostly that the transfer department has let us down uh, in the last 10, 10, 12 years. We have seen almost like, 100 plus players coming in and going out. But uh, you've seen uh, the last, I think it was yesterday, uh, there was a comment uh, saying that uh, that the those people who are involved in transfers, uh, they renewed the contracts thinking that their the player's price will, may go up and they will get a better value. So that was the craziest thing to say because we have seen who all players are getting their contract renewed and we never use them. And uh, if you are not using those players, and then definitely their value won't go up. So I think, yeah, it's good for the club that uh, the people like those, these type of people are now leaving the club and we'll, it's like looking like a proper build, a rebuild process, uh, like starting from the scratch and with the people like uh, Ten Hag and maybe Paul Mitchell coming in uh, can, uh, can, can, can kickstart this build up and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Happy yeah. days. <laughs> and if you look around Europe, even Ragnik was saying in, in his press the other day, you have all these big clubs who have that kind of structure within the board. You don't just have sort of the CEO sorting it all out and stuff like that. You have an actual structure, sporting director who speaks to the manager, then the manager speaks with the board, and then they have this, it's all done in a certain process. And United have always done it kind of like freestyle, kind of like our football in a sense. But yeah, there'll, there'll be more on this as well. Apparently, it's going to be an update at around quarter past six um, from a reliable source. So we'll keep you updated. Make sure you st stay on our Instagram page for that because we will report it as soon as it comes out. So Because the reason why I say that, apparently it's not just Judge who's the only one who's leaving. Apparently, a few yeah. more are leaving as well. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, Dan, do you want to lead us into our next article regarding Ralph Ragnick? Yeah, the next article is about Ralph Lagnick and uh, it's now official uh, that Ralph Lang Ragnick has been appointed as a new Austria coach until 2024. Uh, as also uh, he said, he mentioned that uh, I will I will take over as national team manager of Austria at the end of the season, but will continue consultancy with Man United. I'm looking forward to helping United become a real force again. Uh, personally, I didn't like this idea uh, about uh, Ragnik uh, playing uh, playing his part both the sides because uh, this is very crucial moment for United because uh, you since this all, the rebuild has to happen in this summer and uh, there will be a lot uh, decision lot more decisions uh, to be taken by people like Ragnik and uh, Ten Hag or maybe the other uh, members coming in. So uh, so I I don't think that with uh, is Austria in World Cup. No, uh, not to my knowledge, no. Not that. They, they could be. Go on, just carry on. I'll, I'll have a look for you now. Okay, yeah. So, but uh, still, uh, there were rumours that uh, Ragnik will be, uh, maybe he'll be in United for six days a month. 
so yeah. i don't think six days is enough uh, for him to uh, implement whatever his thoughts are or maybe work with the new manager and at this moment i would like uh, ragnik to be very closely working with ten hag but uh, as the thing stands uh, with him being the ma- manager of uh, austria it it won't uh, work well together uh, but yeah at this moment it uh, what it is uh, it's like to be that he has to be uh, balancing his work in both the sides but I, at the same time he he will be more committed to austria than manchester united yeah so it's going to be a very tough thing uh, but yeah at the very first place it we cannot uh, blame ragnik because that's how our board dealt with ragnik and uh, gave him this role uh, this was not uh, like a permanent role also so yeah that's uh, that's again a bad decision by board of uh, giving him such a role uh, which was not permanent or uh, doesn't involve ragnik in every decision uh, taking so yeah a bit a tough news there definitely um i just checked as well it said that i think they've gone through to the qualifiers but they're not definitely there was no no real clarity on it really so yeah i'm not entirely sure but either way this one concerns me down a bit just because of yeah think about it, how much genuine time is he going to have focusing solely on manchester united like managing a team whether it's international football or club football it takes a lot of your commitment up um and maybe the the six days a month thing was spot on when they came out of that that's that's all he's going to do because ha- yeah. first of all how much of a say is he going to have like how how yeah. involved is he going to be if it's six days like there's only so much impact you can have with that so that worries weekend. me at least um, only the weekend exactly yeah just the weekends just if just a little like one hour phone call on a saturday and they're like ralph are you available mate and he's like mm, yeah I've probably got about half an hour or something if you want to have a little chat and it's, that's not going to be mega impactful on on the rest of the thing. So I just hope for, for whatever we can get it get him for, then you take it at this moment in time because I think what he's doing, he's gone in the club, and unlike a lot of managers, maybe you can argue with Jose Mourinho, he did it. He's exposed the club for what it is. He's gone in and told everything that's fundamentally wrong with it, um, and that's why I described it as open heart surgery because everything from the top is going to have to be sorted out. Everything within the club, the players, the staff, every, absolutely everything has got to be sorted out. And this is it now. He's ripped the bandage off. Like You see a lot of people talking about the way we're playing on the pitch and stuff. That's got fuck all to do with Ragnik. The reason why it's like that is probably because he's come out, been brutally honest, and the players haven't liked it, and now they're spitting the dummies out. That's the way yeah. I see it. So as much to end, to conclude, basically, as much as we can keep him around the club, the better for me. Um, yeah. I'm a bit, I'm a bit gutted that he's, he is managing Austria because he's again his, his focus is going to be taken away. But look, as long as he stays consulting um, and helps Ten Hag and maybe and helps push Paul Mitchell into the club, then that's only good news um, for me. Now, yeah. there's an, another. Unless you had anything else to say on that, Dan, is another article I wanted to get into. Yeah, we can continue with that. Yeah, so there's another article on. Um, Calvin Phillips, and he says he's about to switch agents with the intention of securing a transfer and discussions over a contract renewal with Leeds have become protracted. And that's from Samuel Lockhurst um, in the MEN. I think personally, it'd be really good in that midfield. I thought of the your roles, he played really, really well, was one of our best players for England. Obviously, we got to the final in that tournament. So him and Declan Rice alongside each other were really good. And I actually thought, looking back at that, maybe apart from the final, because I thought Declan Rice was good in the final. Most of the tournament, he was the better player in that system yeah. for me than, than Declan Rice. Some people might disagree with me on that, but I, I do think he's a genuine, genuine good player. He's got bags of ability. He's got bags of energy. And that's what we need in that midfield. Like pe- people say, you know, Fred and McTominay are just sort of passion energy merchants. And, it's true, but Calvin Phillips bring quality with him as well. There's a reason why they call yeah. him like the Yorkshire Perlo. It's because he's he is technically good on the ball. So, and you probably get him for half the price of uh, Declan Rice Dan as well. So, I honestly yeah. I don't mind it at all. But what what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, even I like uh, Phillips, and I've seen uh, him playing for England as well as for Leeds. So he's a very good player and a player for the future as well. He's already uh, playing very well, and uh, he has very high potential. And uh, he'll be available for, uh, as you mentioned, at half the price of uh, Rice. So that that's also a plus point there. But at the same time, uh, I heard rumors uh, saying that uh, Phillips, on his side, considering uh, all the uh, the the 
competition between uh, the uh, competition between Leeds and United from the that that's a, a, a like long uh, lo from long back. So I think considering that uh, it, the, the rumors were that uh, Phillips will be uh, respectful for Leeds and may extend uh, one year uh, to and and be with Leeds one more season. But uh, yeah, also I, I I was just checking the. Uh, table uh, i thought if leeds have a chance to be relegated then we may have a better chance mm. to get him but it yeah, seems uh, yeah it, it seems that they are uh, i think they are two spots up of a relegation zone so i don't think that will happen so uh, yeah at the same time uh, but but if we get him that will be a great plus for us because uh, he's a type of player he's not proper cdm but uh, if you consider eric tenag uh, he plays more like four two three one, and uh, Phillips also plays in the bit bit of that two in, in the middle two. Yeah. So alongside a proper CDM, uh, Calvin Phillips will be the perfect choice for us. And um, and it, it, you just imagine put Calvin Phillips instead of uh, Matic in last game, then how how game could have been changed uh, with with that one particular player. So I would like exactly. to like him to come to our club, and he's available for cheap as well. Absolutely done. Agree with you on that. Yeah. Uh, so we'll move out, move to the next uh, news and similar to sim similar in the position uh, mm -hmm. about uh, Ruben Neves. It was uh, the news was stated by uh, Rob Dawson ES in ESPN. Uh, he said that uh, Manchester United have been offered the option to bid for Ruben Neves, but there is firm interest from clubs in La Liga and others in the Premier League as well. There is desire on both Neves and agent George Mendes part to move the player this summer. Uh, I also like this player. Uh, I, I, I've been calling out for this player uh, from last season itself because uh, I think there were uh, in summertime also we were uh, looking for this player, but uh, but he was uh, the club was not willing to se send him. Uh, but he is similar to what uh, Phillips can, uh, similar to what uh, Phillips plays, uh, he also plays in the uh, much bit of a similar role. Yeah. Uh, and he's, I think, uh, last time when we were uh, going for him, he was available for around 30 to 40 million. But uh, but in last week, I, I saw a rumor it, they stated around 100 million. Yeah, so, the, uh, the coach came out, didn't he, and said something like, Yeah, he's going to be out. We'd be gutted to lose him, but it'd be about 100 million. And you're like, Oh my God, 100 million pounds. Absolutely yeah. not. Right. Yeah, but if, if he is available for 30 and 40, I think uh, Ronaldo and Bruno Fernandes can maybe uh, help it out. and. Uh, Make yeah, the have a possible. word. Have a yeah. word. Yeah, yeah. Can, can act as an agent. Yeah. So yeah, there's an, another great player. I think he's still 23 or 24, somewhere around that. Yeah. So, yeah. He's, uh, he's still relatively young. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that can be a very good uh, player for us to have, and also that Portuguese combinations of Bruno Fernandes, Ruben Neves, and Ronaldo. Absolutely. Um, yeah, for me, Dan, another one I, I'd love because we need two midfielders um, and that's just evident from watching last night, as you referred to then. Um, there was a, I don't know if you've seen it, the, I put something in the chat, there was a graph on McTominay um, and in, so in the second half, in 40 minutes, he made two passes. Two, yeah. two passes or something like that against Chelsea and it's just like... McTominay couldn't conduct a one-man band like he really couldn't and when you watch Ruben Neves he is just the, the polar opposite like he's got the tenacious um, attitude he's got energy but then his football and ability alongside it his long-range shooting his long-range passing yeah. he can keep the ball kind of like ticking over similar to how Thiago does for Liverpool not to that extent to that level but he's, he is a very good footballer um, and for that price, you know, the, if, if it's going to be 35 40, happy days. I'm not paying anyway near 100 million. That coach can fuck right off if you think United you know, are going to pay 100 million pounds for him. Absolutely not. But just focusing on the midfield, we, that's why we need two midfielders, Dan. We need like a destroyer, like a Chuamine or a Kante mm -hmm. or someone like that, Fabinho or Rodri. And then we need someone alongside him. Who can play like a Modric or you know just someone like that? Someone who can weave, weave in it like in between players can break the lines with passing, and that yeah. is we are desperate for someone like that because every single game we lose the midfield battle. Like it's how many times have we said it after a game? It's just it's becoming like the norm now. So when Ten Hag comes in, if he does go get a Phillips and Neves or Chumini and whoever or Kamara or whatever, just yeah. please just go get someone because it's going to be so refreshing in pre-season 
when we're actually controlling a game and uh, yeah. under like a system that Ten Hag's playing, you know, where we're fluent with the ball, it's just going to be so nice to watch. I, mean, I, I can't wait for it because I'm sick of watching our midfield. Like Matic yesterday was okay. He was one of our better players, but you can he, you can still see he's very leggy in the transition. You can still see he struggles to keep up at times with the pace of the game, but he's still got that quality on the ball and you need both now. You need energy and you need that. And that's why Liverpool, City, Chelsea, all of them are really good because their midfielders all have mm-hmm. that bracket of quality yeah. within them. So, absolutely, I'd take Ruben Neves in a heartbeat. Um, yeah, another article. Let's get through this. So, this is Ragnick, and he was speaking about Cristiano Ronaldo after the game yesterday. And he says, not only the goal Cristiano scored, but his whole performance, his attitude at the age of 37 this is not normal to do that. If he plays like he did today, he can still be a big help to this team. Um, as you know, Dan, I was at the game last night and the performance Ronaldo put in was incredible to the rest, in comparison to the rest of the team. He was fighting for every ball, linking up play really well, some smart passing, great touches. Um, and then the goal he scored, the pass from Matic, he brings it down beautifully, one touch and just rock it, top left corner. And you have to give him props because the man is 37 years old. He's the second yeah. top goal scorer in the Premier League, I think joint with Hyung Ming Sun and just behind Mo Salah, in mm. probably one of the shittish United teams. Like, individual quality, you can argue whatever, like, it's not. But as a team, it's probably one of the shittest, if not the shittish United team in a long, long while. Just imagine what he would have done. Me and Adam spoke about it when we did uh, Statman, was it? No, the preview, sorry. When we did the Chelsea preview and we said, just imagine... If he would have gone to City, what would have happened there? Like, how yeah. many goals he would have scored? How many trophies he would have won? Like, it's scary to think because he's doing it in a really, really bad United team now and second top goal scorer at 37 years old. What striker in the world right now can you say would go to the Premier League at that age and do really well? Like, this, this, this and, the, and that too in United team. <laughs> Yeah, and that too, in uh, with uh, how the United are performing. So if you put any other another striker or top striker in United teams, you may not be able to score this many. You could goals. put Benzema or Lewandowski in United's <laughs> team right now, and they won't score that many goals. They really wouldn't yeah. because we're just we're awful. <laughs> you you will see Benzema uh, playing as defense because you know the yeah. all, all the time we have the ball in the well, defenders. Ronaldo yesterday was pretty much playing the, like in defense. He was everywhere. Yeah. He was absolutely everywhere in that pitch trying to. Just dedicate himself to everything. And you look at that and you look at someone at Rashford yesterday was walking, walking yeah, at times. Like exactly. he was really struggling. That's why Alonso was free so many times. You see the Langer tracking back with um Reese James. But Rashford mm. on the other side was just I was I was saying to my friend who was watching the game at the time, I was like, he's fucking he's walking. He's he's literally <laughs> walk, he's not bothered at all. It's just like, yeah. oh my god. But yeah, just your thoughts on Ronaldo, like what's Rangnick, what Rangnick's come out and said, Dan. What 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 do you think? Yeah, I think uh, whatever is said about uh, uh, Ronaldo is spot on there because uh, with, the, with with that that uh, age, you will never see a player uh, performing at this level. I don't think I'll I'll ever see that again in my whole life with any other players. Uh, yeah. we'll, we are we are so fortunate that we are still seeing Ronaldo in our team performing at that level. Uh, you you just uh, take Dea and Ronaldo out of this team, and you will be fighting for the for the maybe <laughs> may coming out of relegation zone because you you just. Uh, minus out the goals which Ronaldo has scored and uh, the saves that De Gea has made. So, yeah, at the same time, uh, th- there have been uh, complaints about Ronaldo not tracking back or not supporting in the uh, defence. I don't care about that because there is a striker, whenever you have the ball, he's willing and you, you, will never, you will never be able to complain about Ronaldo when you have the ball and you are attacking and you, you, uh, you will never see Ronaldo... Uh, not moving uh, enough uh, whenever we have the ball. You will see the very first person who will make the run with Ronaldo whenever you have the ball. And the same thing he was doing uh, when he was in uh, Real Madrid. Uh, when he in, in, Even in his younger age, he never tracked back or uh, helped, helped the, the defenders out. But at the same time, whenever there is an attack, uh, he was the first person to make the run. So yeah. I don't care if he is not uh, performing. Even uh, Robbie Keane, uh, in, even uh, Keane was uh, mentioning yesterday, that uh, he, he doesn't care that if uh, Ronaldo is not tracking back, you have one player. Uh, if, if there is one player less who is tracking back, then that doesn't matter. It doesn't uh, make sense. If you are asking a top player uh, like Ronaldo, who is giving his all out when you are attacking and you are asking him to track back. So I don't think uh, tracking back or um, asking him to uh, help out in the defense is a good 
take. But uh, at the same time, I think uh, Ragnik uh, with Eric Tenag coming in um, at least for a couple of seasons, he can make use of Ronaldo at still at this age with his yeah. whatever his playing style is. Yeah. I don't I don't mind him dropping deep as long as his link up plays good. Like there was times yeah. in December and January where he was dropping deep, and when he actually got the ball into feet, he'd lose it, or he tried dribbling past someone mm-hmm. and he'd lose it. So that's why I was getting frustrated. If he can drop deep, get involved in the game, and then you have runners making smart runs in behind him, which Rashford can never do. Um, you know, like Son does for Kane for, for Tottenham. If Rashford could play like that, then we'd, we'd, it'd be fine Ronaldo dropping back. So even if passing yesterday, it was a pass he did out to one matter in like the 80th minute, I think, or 85th minute for the outside of his foot. That was just beautiful, like absolutely crisp. Yeah. It looked like one matter actually played the pass to himself. Like that's how good of a pass it was. So, yeah, yeah um, phenomenal last night, Cristiano Ronaldo. Yeah, with Ronaldo on the pitch, if you provide a half chance, you know that he's going to score. At least if you yeah. give him three to four chances, he will score a couple of goals from there. Even yesterday when he got the, when Matic played the ball and uh, with the posture of Ronaldo, you can say that it's a goal before him, before he sh- shot the ball. So that, that's what confidence he uh, bring in the game uh, whenever he has the ball. And um, yeah, I think uh, maybe for a couple of more seasons, we'll be able to see him. Uh, I hope that uh, Ten Hag may accept him and uh, build a team around him. So, yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait till uh, the summer to see what goes with him. Uh, we move, we'll move, we move out to the next uh, news. Uh, it's about uh, Milinkovic Savic. Uh, so, uh, it's from Sport Wit- Witness uh, about um, Milinkovic Savic. And uh, it states that uh, Manchester United are the team that are moving most decisively for. Uh, Milinkovic Savic to replace Paul Pogba. Uh, I think he is a good player. Uh, I have seen him playing uh, in uh, Syria A, and uh, he, he he looked pretty sharp and uh, almost like what Pogba has uh, done in Juventus team. Uh, the yeah. role he has played for Juventus is more like similar type of player, but also he runs around a lot uh, better than Paul Paul Pogba. He gives himself and helps out in defense also. So he can be a very great addition for the team. Uh, but at the same time, I don't think uh, we should be going for uh, central midfielder first before uh, before going for CDM. I want first we should be going for CDM because all the news yeah. we have seen, we have seen about uh, Neves and uh, Savage and uh, uh, and another one, uh, Phillips. So uh, all these three players are uh, central midfielder. But before getting uh, closer to them, I would like us to go for central defensive midfielder like Shomini and other players. So yeah, we can we can have one player because I can uh, gamble on this uh, central midfielder because we know that uh, next season Donny van der Beek will be coming back. So maybe we can use him for that. But at the same time, very first thing, I'll I'll go for the CDM. Yeah, but uh, Milinkovic Savic, if we can get him around uh, 50 or 60, I'm not sure what actual price is. Uh, if we can get him for 50, somewhere around 50, I think then we can go for him. But before that, we should go for CDM. What's your thought, Nick, on that? Uh, yeah, it's similar to what we were discussing on the show on Tuesday or Wednesday. I can't remember when we dropped it. The Ten Hag one that we did with me, Sam, Severe, and Shreyas. And we were saying with, with uh, Frankie De Jong, who's similar. He was like, he plays us like an eight and not like the, the like a specialist six. If you're bringing him into a team, like, you know what Liverpool did with Thiago when they brought it? It was like the icing on the cake, like they brought him into that and he just added that little bit of spice in it like it, it just that bit of quality yeah. it's all right if you bring in Savic into a team like that but you, if you're going to go get someone now recruitment as you said it has to be someone it has to be a number six who can break up yeah. play is really good on the ball and it's got bags of energy that is that is the first transfer they should make in the summer get that out the way straight away or if it's 50 million 60 million whatever it is get a quality quality player who can deal with the pace of the Premier League and has the right mentality, put him in that position, then go sort out your eights and your wingers and your defenders yeah, and exactly. all that kind of stuff. Um, just another thing on this as well. This rumour has been floating about since, like, I think when Mourinho was in. Like, Mourinho was linked with him quite a lot. Mm-hmm. So this Savage yeah. has been linked with us for ages. <laughs> absolutely ages. Um, it will probably still be linked. We'll probably get him when he's, like, 36. That's, that's a typical United thing to do. <laughs> when he's completely yeah. past his prime, and then, like, I won't be surprised if we go go get Wesley Snyder now or Gareth Bale when they're like 38, 40. So, yeah, for me, I feel like this is more 
uh, Milinkovic Savic's agent pushing this more than, than what mm. it is, um, trying to get him a move to Manchester United. I don't think, from, from what I've heard from Fabrizio Romano and people like that, uh, they haven't mentioned his name quite a lot. So I'm a bit on the fence about this one. I won't mind him, he's a good player, but not for me personally. I'd, as I said before, I'd go for Neves and a true Mina, if I'm being completely Yeah, his, his, his price tag is also, I think, a bit high. I think it will cost us around 60 yeah. to 70 million. So I don't think we should be going for him. Yeah, that's why definitely his agent pushing it because he's like, yeah, about 67, he'll probably take about 10, 15 million of it and then yeah. the rest goes to Lazio. So, yeah, we'll see. Again, the summer's going to be so interesting, Dan, because there's so many things like, watch the amount of players. We, we're already getting linked with loads anyway, but when the summer actually kicks in and the season's over, watch like the media surrounding Manchester United. It's going to go nuts, absolutely nuts. So, here at um, Real Red Stock new show, it's going to be going mental. We're going to have loads of shit to cover, so <laughs> stick with us on that one. Um, another article we're going to discuss, so this is from Mail Sport, and it says Manchester United could target Ajax goal machine Sebastian Haller this summer. Now, of course, Haller with Ajax, um, Ten Hag brought him in from West Ham for about £20 million, pounds, I believe. Got mm. about 10, 11 goals in the Champions League, did really well for him in the group stage, he's done really well for him in the league. Like, he's kind of reincarnated him as a player reinvented him sorry not reincarnated him reinvented him as a player like, and then Ajax is playing really really well whether I take him at Manchester United I don't think I will because I think he's just going to use Cristiano Ronaldo in the same way anyway as we were suggesting before yeah. I think he's going to probably going to use him as a target man or whatever um, so I can't really see it If how old is Hilaire do you know is he about late 20s he's 27 27 27 so He's not exactly the young striker you want to bring in alongside Cristiano Ronaldo, is it? Yeah. So I'd prefer to bring, you know, my choice of striker. It'd be Darwin Nunes every day of the week, twice on yeah, a Sunday. Exactly. Absolutely, I'd bring him in. So, yeah, they're, they're my thoughts on it. I wouldn't personally bring If you're going to get him for a really cheap price, then, I don't know, maybe. Maybe. It's just how happy it is there to play a certain amount of games. I know when he got left out for the final, Ten Hag took him out of the gate, uh, took him out of the team because yeah. he wasn't happy with how he was like with his ego and that, and how he was going on about certain stuff so i don't think he'd be happy coming to united and being like a bit part so for me I, i'd say no what, what are you saying dan yeah even my thoughts are almost the same because uh he's now as you mentioned uh about the age he's 27 and by the time uh he'll get into the team he'll be like uh once ronaldo uh goes maybe after a couple of seasons he'll be 29 and uh if you want a striker with uh, 29 of age and he's not a top striker, uh, but at the same time, I would like a young striker, as you me mentioned about Nunes, and uh, he's, I think, around 22 or somewhere around 20, 22. Yeah, yeah so I think uh, we can we can go for some young striker and uh, give the, that uh, young striker a couple of season time uh, to just gel in and play alongside maybe Ronaldo. And whenever Ronaldo is not fit, he can get the chance and maybe also learn from Ronaldo because that was one of the focus when we bought Ronaldo that he will be sharing his experience and uh, will be uh, giving his experience to other players but I don't think we have seen any experience no, going through Ronaldo at this moment or any other no. player grabbing those ex experience we yeah definitely we we thought maybe Greenwood can uh, do that but he has done his stuff and uh, that has kicked him out uh, yeah. But yeah, uh, I don't think uh, we should go near him because he costs around 35 to 40 million and uh, I don't want to waste 35 to 40 million in that. Mm -hmm. Rather, I would also, uh, maybe you can get a young player from the youth academy uh, to fill in the place uh, at least for two seasons and uh, just gel in and uh, come to his place and be ready when uh, Ronaldo is moving out. Especially because he's already flopped in the Premier League as well. Like he's already been at West yeah. Ham and he didn't really do well there. So I wouldn't want to then bring him back and try like, yeah, just don't make sense to me, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. So uh, moving on to the next uh, news, uh, it's from Mail uh, Mail Sport uh, from Elvis Cagnazzo. Uh, he said about uh, Mourinho that Mourinho wants to rate former club Manchester United for. Nemanja Matic, uh, Eric Bailly and uh, Diego Dalot as he looks to regenerate Roma with Premier League cast off this summer following Tam, uh, Tammy Abraham's success. So when I, when I saw this news, I was so happy <laughs> because uh, you, you know that Nemanja uh, Matic is already uh, planning to leave and he has already declared it. And uh, Bailly also will be leaving because we are also going for a centre-back. So I don't think if we get another centre-back and Bailly will be still sticking here uh, with this club. 
so uh, with diego dallo i was bit uh, bit like 50 50 because i like the player uh, we have yeah. seen the potential uh, when he had a run of games when uh, he was introduced in this uh, in this team uh, when uh, he was i think it was in november or december somewhere there uh, mm -hmm. he was playing really good for uh, many games continuously but now currently he is uh, finding it difficult to uh, play in, on that same level but we know that the player is there in him and uh, with he he is very good in attacking wise but he has to be groomed at the defensive side of him uh, so i think uh, i would rather let matic and uh, bai go maybe we can get uh, for matic how, how how much we can get maybe couple of couple of millions uh, <laughs> yeah, we'd be very lucky if we get if we get five uh, for bai i think maybe he can get uh, we can get around 10 15 so yeah we can use those that amount into some other things but uh, it's good it's also if you see that uh, these players like matic and bai they will be very suited in uh, in that league uh, in that league uh, serie yeah. a and uh, so that league is specially built for these type of players so i uh, that they will be uh, maybe shining up in that league so yeah that's a good news if it happens so i'll be very happy if it happens apart from uh dalot because uh, i don't think we'll be going for a right back again in this summer so i would rather keep dalot here and rest uh, other players leave can leave yeah, the other two yeah we've got a lot of other priorities so up before we start looking at right back somewhere so yeah i agree with the dalot thing i actually i really liked him when right it came in he was the most improved player we had similar opinions on that then with dan when it came to diego dalot yeah. like we both thought he played he was doing really well But I don't know what it is. Him and Tellers specifically the past three, four games against Chelsea, Liverpool, Arsenal, they've been shit, absolutely shit. A little bit better last night, but even like, they just, I don't know, they just seem to be very short of confidence like the rest of the team. So I'm not sure what's going on with them. Um, but regarding this, just focusing on this story um, in general, I think Mourinho is probably looking at what Conte did with Inter Milan when he, they took our cast offs as well. And they had Alexis Sanchez, Ashley Young, uh, Damian as well, wasn't it? And maybe a yeah. few others. I can't remember off the top of my head. So maybe he's looking at that and thinking, well, they had they did really well uh, for them, won the Scudetto or whatever. So why not? Why why not bring him? Yeah. And I actually think Matic in the Italian league would would do really well because in terms exactly. of like the physicality levels, it's no way near the Premier League. And as we know, the Italian league is very it's based on defensive work, like being compact, staying in your shape, and very sort of. Yeah, it's slow, slower tempo, certainly, to the Premier League. So I can kind of understand why Mourinho would want them kind of players. And I think they would play well for Roma. I think they do well. Eric Bailly I've been a fan of anyway, I think he's a player in yeah. there. It's always The fitness has always been the issue with him. And managers never seem to rate him. And maybe that's why, because in a centre-back partnership, you need that consistency, don't you? You need that, like, constant games. And that's why Maguire got played all the time, because with all the, the faults he's got, Maguire, he is fit all the time like very rarely yeah. has an injury so he's very reliable in that sense so a manager can always pick him and in defense you need that um i do think lindelof and varan are our best partnership though um when it comes yeah, to us but yeah you can take him if you want Mourinho. just you can't have diego dallo <laughs> yeah oh yeah i don't know if there's any player from roma to take to be honest at the minute i think maybe spinazzola he was he did really well in the euros he looked like a good player but If you want to do a swap, then I'll take that because he's a left back and he's, he's decent as well. It's yeah. better than what we've got. So, yeah, um, that's that. Now, another one. This is on Paul Torres and this is from Fabrizio Romano. So it says Paul Torres's release clause will be valid this summer. 55 to 60 million available until the end of the market. Manchester United and Manchester City are both interested. Chelsea have also sent their scouts to follow him. Um, Paul Torres is... A good player, uh, left-footed centre-back, really good at playing out from the back. He's got decent aerial ability. Um, it's, I don't know, it just doesn't grab me as a player. You know when you see a player like Darwin Nunes, yeah. Chumina, uh, Jules Kunde, I'm a big fan of. These kind of players, I'm like, yeah, go get him, go get him. Paul Torres, I'm more like, I wouldn't mind him, but I I've watched him a few times. Obviously, we played him. In the final, when we got beat uh, on penalties, I watched him against Liverpool the other day in the Champions League when Liverpool won 2 0 and they dominated. And he did okay, he was all right, but I don't think he'd come into that, that like that back line and instantly just be like, boom. Do you know what I mean? I don't think he's that type yeah. of player to go in and just completely sort it out. Maybe under Ten Hag, he'd be decent the way Ten Hag builds up. 
and I think he'd help in progressing the ball and stuff like that because his passing out from the back is really good. Um, and I believe his pass accuracy isn't quite high. But mm. yeah, it's not it's not one that I'd be like, I'd like I'd be massively like screaming over, do you know what I mean? It's it's one of them. Like if we get him, we get him and see how he does under Ten Hag. What, what, what do you think? Yeah, for me, I think uh, he's. Uh, I personally feel that I, I've not seen him much playing, uh, but somehow I feel, I feel that he is more like Lindelof type of player. So similar to like Lindelof yeah. and. Uh, it's like and a tall Lindelof, type. basically. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so it's like uh, it's like he's available for, for fifty-five to sixty. Um, it doesn't suit his uh, the way the, the level of uh, his, and maybe for twenty-five to thirty we can go for him. But uh, fifty-five to sixty is too much. Rather than we can go for a young uh, young centre back like Timber, and uh, we can spend amount on such players who who will give us a lot more potential in the coming future. And also, I want a centre back. To come into our team, who can really replace uh, Maguire? So I don't want any player uh, with less standard than Maguire because you know that if you buy a player of less standard than Maguire, then he'll definitely be on the bench the whole season. So my prime focus is to take Maguire out of the team. So for that, we need someone uh, who can uh, who can take really take Maguire out of out of the team with his performances. I think Timber will suit that very much because Eric Ten Hag is a manager who. Uh, actually, values the uh, performances, so I think. Uh, would that, it would be, sorry to interrupt there, Dan. Would that be your choice? Of, like any of the centre backs now, who would be your first choice to go and get? Uh, mine would be Timber. Timber. I don't think we have any other options. <laughs> yeah, it's a good point. There's, there's, I mean, there's a, there's a few out there. Who did you discuss the other day? Uh, you've got so you got Sven Botman who wants to leave Leo. He's a decent centre back. Jules mm-hmm. Kunde is going to leave Sevilla. Um, I think he'd be my first choice. Rudiger's already gone. I think he's, he signed yeah. out like a pre-contract with Real Madrid yeah. or something along the lines of that. You've got Timber. And then, oh, yeah. Um, bloody hell, I forgot his name. Is it Martinez? He plays next to Timber in the team. 24 years old. Been one of Ajax's uh, top, top players as a centre-back. Can play out from the back. He's only five foot ten, But he's got, in terms of his stats, um, aerial ability, he's one of the best in the league. Um, done really well for Ajax. Like better, I'd say better than Timber, and he's only twenty four years old. So that's the one I would go for. And they only paid like fifteen million for him or something mm-hmm. from like Argent from an Argentinian league. So they'd only want about thirty to thirty five mil, I think max. And I think that's the kind of range you want to be spending around, probably to take that player to the next level. But yeah, just curious to see who your who your first choice was. Yeah. Um... For me, I think I'll still stick with Timber. But at the same time, you mentioned about Jules Conde. I think I'll. Uh, I also like that player, but I'm not sure whether he'll be available for a good price. Uh, I yeah, think last time when we were discussing, it was like 70, 80 more than that. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure whether uh, we'll be having that uh, guts to go for such player. And and uh, I'm not sure whether Jules Conde is injury prone uh, because I I was hearing a lot about his injury in the last okay. season. So I'm not sure whether he's really injury prone or not. But yeah, for that amount, I don't think uh, we'll be going for that. So I think Timber also will come around 50 to 60, if mm-hmm. I'm not wrong. If, yeah, but uh, if, if I compare Timber to uh, uh, Timber to Power Torres, I, I would definitely go for Timber because of the same price and uh, you will get more from Timber than uh, from Power Torres. And uh, with the with, with Tanak connection, I think yeah. uh, you also will like him and he may take the decision to play him rather uh, instead of Maguire, maybe possible. Yeah, but uh, the one yeah, the one uh, thing I, I'll say about Timber, he came out the other day, he did an interview, and he was like, "I'm happy to stay at Ajax and play Champions League football." So that's why I don't think. Yeah, and then he's kind of like it's like a oh, it's like a bullet in the stomach, isn't it? You just kind of think, "Well, yeah, he's right. We're not even going to be in the Champions League, probably not even Europa League at this point." Even, so. Yeah. Even even Ch- Chomini was playing around with Champions League something with yeah. uh, then uh, yeah then Romano also tweeted similar to something like that you will definitely yeah. play Champions League so, so I think we are out of the race but Chomini in, in a sense we're gonna have to like go for these niche players who are around the world with really bright talents but they're playing for like teams that are kind of like a little bit low. Do you yeah. know what I mean? They're the star in that team but they were like maybe eighth or ninth in the league or whatever so maybe that's something we have to look at um, for our trans- uh, transfer strategy. Yeah, exactly. So now moving on to the next one, the last of last for the day. Last uh, one. Let's go. Yeah. So this is from the Athletic UK. Uh, 
about Van Bissaka, and they mentioned that uh, any potential move for Aaron Van Bissaka to Crystal Palace is likely to be on a loan rather than a permanent move. Uh, yeah, uh, we have seen, uh, we have given around two to three years to Van Bissaka, and uh, we have not still seen uh, the player to up to his level, or maybe I think he has, he has already reached his peak. And um, we know that he's uh, very good defensive wise, but offensive uh, while attacking, we are not getting anything out of him. So, uh, yeah, rather uh, letting him go for a loan, I don't think we should be letting him go for a loan. Maybe you can go uh, let him go for a permanent deal. Uh, and uh, maybe with that same amount, you can get uh, another uh, right back, maybe a younger one uh, who can play alongside, uh, maybe uh, together with. Uh, not together, maybe in, in a rotational role. Like with, a Lamptey. Uh, Do you know yeah. Lamptey at Brighton? Someone like that, yeah, maybe yeah. I bring in. Yeah. Like a young, yeah. a young so, right back. Yeah, you can use Dallo and the other uh, right back uh, in, in in terms like uh, whoever is needed at that particular most. Yeah. At this season, uh, when Bisaka was there, we were so... Uh, at one point, I was thinking like it's better to have both because uh, Dallo was uh, needed offensive wise and uh, Van Bissaka was good in defensive wise. We could uh, use them according to the situation. But I think it, it's not working out. So, as we have always mentioned, that we have two players doing uh, one player's yeah. job. So, yeah, we have to get rid of th those things at least for, yeah. uh, from this summer onwards. So, yeah, uh, uh, Bissaka, I think I, I, we should let him go on uh, for a permanent deal rather than going for a loan because it, it doesn't make sense. When you let a player uh, go on loan and um, he's already passed his prime um, and you will not get a better <laughs> player than this. Probably you will not get a better player <laughs> than this. Wan has passed his prime. <laughs> yeah, as, as the thing stands, he, <laughs> whatever yeah, his, his level of prime. He's 23 he already... and, he's, and he's passed his prime already. <laughs> yeah. It Crazy. seems like his, yeah, it seems like because we have already given him two to three years and we have not seen any improvement uh, offensive wise. Yeah, so, it's true. Uh, yeah, absolutely. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, Juan Masako, I I don't see any way back for him to be honest. I don't I don't see him improving. He's had like you just said, then two three years to prove that he can going forward. He's had tiny glimpses where you've seen I've seen him like assist a Marshall header for example. I can't remember who it was against. Yeah. I've seen him overlap the odd time and put a good cross in, but nine times out of ten. He tends to like doddle on the ball and he'll end up playing it just straight back to the centre back or to McTominay. And then they'll switch across the pitch. And then our dominant side, which is, you know, the left side when we've got Shaw and, and uh, Sancho or Tellers and Sancho. That right, the reason why that right side was non existent for so long is because Wamba Saka was a massive part in that. He just cannot, whoever it is who's there, he just doesn't have that connection with him and he doesn't. He rarely overlaps because Jaden Sancho, for example, when he when he was playing on the right hand side, yeah, he's one of them players that if you give him space, he can work magic. And because yeah. Wamsaka was never running past him, which would then drag the player, you know, out and then give Jaden yeah. Sancho more time to kind of create and stuff. He, he was always isolated, or even when Mason was playing in the team, or if yeah. it's a Langer on the right hand side, they're always isolated because he doesn't provide that whip for him. Um, and the reason why Gary Neville and David Beckham were so successful on that side is because the partnership, first and foremost, was like that. And second mm. of all, Gary Neville knew how we'd work. And, it, and he just had that, you know what I mean, that connection. Yeah. And Juan Bissaka doesn't have that. And he doesn't have the technical ability for me. Um, especially like the importance on modern day right backs now and left backs. Let's just say wing backs, for example. Look at any top team in Europe. They have the best in the world, pretty much. Like yeah. I would say Reese James... Uh, especially last night was really good, but Reese James, uh, Cancelo, Robertson, Trent, yeah. these kind of players, the best in the world, the best, and they have such an influence on them teams. Everyone that goes on and, and says, you know, how good are they are as a team and stuff, but if you actually look at the individual stats and look at who's top of most of them, especially Man City, mm -hmm. Cancelo is top for most tackles, yeah. most passes, like most like chance creation, all that kind of stuff. Cancelo is like right at the top. So if you are, if you use that as a comparison to us, you look at the outputs that Wan is putting in, he's having like 50% pass accuracy yeah. on the way, and it's just like no way near good enough. And that's why we're losing the ball so much, because we cannot play out from the back. And that's one thing he will definitely not play. You can clip this up if you want. He will definitely not play under Ten Hag. I can't see it happening. I cannot see mm. it happening at all. So 
if they're going to send him out on loan, then it's not ideal. You want to get a sale for him, so try and put him about in Europe. Or so. Maybe Italian league again. Send him to the Italian league because it's all it's all defensive <laughs> work in it. So send him there, take 25, 30 mil, take your losses. Um, he's still young, so he could still develop over there. You've seen young British players go over there and do really well, like Tamora for AC Milan, who's there now, is doing really well. So, yeah, send him to Italian yeah. league, take 25, 30 mil for him, and then just go invest it in another young, promising right back. That's yeah, before I, before I made the statement about his uh, moving, uh, like he has crossed his prime, I thought he's somewhere around 26, 27, but now I, and you mentioned that he's still 23 and 20. Yeah. 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 It's like uh, it's like the way he was playing. It looks like he's uh, he's like more like a 27, 28. I know what you mean. Uh, it, yeah, he, years of age. At the same time, it pains to see that uh, when you see uh, the other wing backs, uh, full backs from other teams, like mainly from Liverpool. Uh, when you see the assist table for this Premier League, you will see both uh, Arnold and Robertson in the uh, in the top three. So you will see Salah is first, and the other uh, full backs yeah. on the uh, second and third place. So that's how how the modern football has moved out, uh, moved and progressed. Like they how valuable they are, the fullbacks providing in the uh, providing uh, more support while attacking wise. So, uh, but considering Van Bissaka, we don't see any uh, anything contribution from Van Bissaka towards the attack. So yeah, I think it's a good time to move on. Uh, but yeah, we should be selling him for a good amount because that same amount we'll be spending out to get a better uh, right back. So. Yeah, it should be a very uh, good deal if you get somewhere around 20, 20, 25. We'll be lucky because we bought him for 50, 55, somewhere around 50. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah, so we're taking 50% still, off our way. Yeah, that yeah, still be a loss, but yeah, better for the team. Absolutely, absolutely. And that, guys, is the roundup, the news roundup, sorry, complete, very informative, very analytical, um, straight to the point as always with me and Dan, you know what you're going to get. Um. Obviously, the breaking news surrounding Matt Judge was not expected at all. That's just come out of nowhere. That's absolutely massive news. You know, Ragnick, Austrian manager, official from Romano, like loads and loads of massive stories surrounding United. So there's only one place to go when you're looking for that kind of stuff, and it's here. We cover absolutely everything from the week in one show. Um, nice and easy. So, yeah, thank you for watching, guys. Thank you for joining me, Dan. If you haven't already... Please subscribe to our um, YouTube channel. I think it's like one off 130 now or something. So it's progressing very nicely. Um, if you want to follow us on socials, just type in Real Red Talk on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, everywhere. We are absolutely everywhere. Um, so for these kind of updates that are coming out on breaking news, we're always reporting it and there's always clips coming out from shows and stuff. So if that's something you're interested in and want to watch, then yeah. Go watch that kind of stuff. And if you're more interested in short kind of fun experiences, go on the TikTok yeah. and uh, look at our YouTube shorts that we've got on the channel as well, which are very interesting and very fun for you lot. So, yeah, thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me, Dan. We will see you in the next one. Peace. Yes.